Hey, hey, Joe Self, yourself. It is Joe Self herself. I can't hear Joe Self herself. Let me test your audio. Martin, yeah, I'm on mute. Martin is here. Come say hey. We want to see your face, sir, and hear your voice. Martin is not, I'm going to unmute you on purpose. <laughs> Go start your video. Let me see. Um, I wanted to look at the, we're going to get started in just a minute. So come on in. Okay. He was I'm on for a second. Yeah, I'm in. Got a split second view. <laughs> a split second of you. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Very good. Thank you. Good, very good, much. good. Things are happening because they should. Yes. So let's see. We have quite a few people registered for this. I am curious if they're going to be watching the replay. We are going to move forward no matter what. And so I'm excited to be here today. Joe, I can. Can I have you tilt your screen a little bit before we get started so that bookcase isn't exactly behind you? Yeah, maybe. You're blending in with the red book books in the back. Well, I can do this. I can hey, do this. Hey, Werner, welcome, welcome. Hey, Carrie Ann, I'm so glad you're here. We are going to get started in just a second. And Richard Harris, good to see you, sir. Come on in, come on in. And Ryan King is joining us. Hey, everybody, tell us where you're from in the chat box. That's what I'm going to be doing today is hosting you in the chat box. I am Rhonda Boyle. I'm in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma, where are you from? Fill me in. And we are going to get started in just a second. And we'll do the all official like Joe, huh? What do you think? <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds, Sounds like good. All right. Well, no sense. Lee, Joe is in Lima, Peru. We are international today, folks. So let me make sure I'm recording and in the right place. I am. Okay, here we go. Well, hey there, everybody. Rhonda Boyle here, and I am a pro and evangelist member on the SOAR.com platform, and I'm eager to bring you great content to help you do more, be more, have more, and I'm excited. Actually, it should be be more, ha be more, do more, have more, and I am thrilled to introduce you to Joe Self herself. She is a strengths branding expert with Joe Self Consulting. She is a talent and idea accelerator she disrupts your life <laughs> all the time <laughs> don't you joe in the best and way possible <laughs> in the best way possible because she is looking to work with big vision leaders helping them uh, move towards their desired destiny by building on their strengths joe self welcome say hey to the people hey to the people as always thank you Rhonda, for having me you bet. Now, listen, I know that you and I have had this conversation. It's near and dear to our hearts. And that is that most coaches don't realize that when they're ready to hang out their shingle as an independent coach, they are thrust into roles as an entrepreneur and they are pushed into doing things and way outside of their lane. And so you are here to talk to us today about the six things that you've learned by being an entrepreneur that are going to help y'all avoid. <laughs> These are mistakes yeah, well, we made for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely going to try to help you avoid what we can. Some of these mistakes are inevitable, but if you can make the mistakes that are going to propel you forward, that's a good thing, right? Mistakes are there. They have a purpose. We're supposed to learn from them, but some mistakes we just don't need to make, right? There are things that we can learn from others and, uh, get it right a little bit faster. Uh, Absolutely. Before going out there and doing it for ourselves. So uh, with that, if you're ready, I'll go ahead and share my screen. I've got just a little presentation because I love pictures. Pictures help emotionally connect to what we're talking about. So as much as I want to see you and have you guys on here, I'm going to share some uh, photos that talk a little bit about what I'm going to mention here. So let's Perfect. 
go ahead and share this baby. Go to the slideshow. Oh. You can do it. You can do it, PowerPoint. All right. So as Rhonda said, we're here to talk about some of the mistakes I made. So these are really the six biggest lessons I have learned as an entrepreneur. And I have been doing something on my own since 2007. So I'm 12 years into working for myself. Now, I wasn't always a coach. I had another business before that. I've actually had two other businesses before this. Um, but I've been coaching since 2015. And honestly, this applies to anything you're doing. But because I made the mistakes back in 2007 and 2008, I didn't make quite as many mistakes when I jumped into being a coach because I'd already had that experience out there. So uh, it was super helpful. And the first thing I'm going to tell you is do not try to be perfect. Don't do it. Uh, because you're talking to my maximizer here. Well, my maximizer too. I've got maximizer in my top and it's hard because we want to go out there. And the very first time I set out to be an entrepreneur, I started a small events company and it was based on what I had done in the corporate world. And I wanted to go out there, but if my website wasn't perfect, if I didn't have the best business card, if I didn't have the best branding, if I didn't look like I'd been doing this for ages, then how was anyone ever going to trust me? And I put all of this money into everything to try and be perfect. And at the end of the day, it didn't matter. It just didn't matter. What mattered were the relationships I was building. What mattered was how clear I was on my message. What mattered was how I brought the people together that I wanted to bring together. My, how perfect my website looked was not important at all. Right. And so mm -hmm. we, we get really stuck in the details and a lot of times that stuckness in the details has a lot to do with fear. Fear of not being ready, fear of not knowing what you're talking about, fear of not having the answers when someone asks you. And all I've got to say is the answer I don't know works wonders because you can find <laughs> yes, the answer. You don't have to have it right then. And that shows your vulnerability. Strength Strategy talks about confident vulnerability all the time. And so being able to say, you know what? I do not have the answer to that, but I will gladly find out. No one expects you to have all the answers either, right? So go out there, be the best you, be who you need to be, and the rest will follow. The rest will come into place, but don't get stuck in perfection before you put yourself out there because you need to be out there to learn who your people are, to learn what perfect is going to look like for you, which honestly, let's, you know, let's admit it, we're humans. Right. Nothing's ever going to be perfect, <laughs> right? I think That's that when you get, when you first get started, Joe, I, I know you'll agree with me. You have to just get your hands dirty. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's get out there and do it because that's really the only way to learn. So we don't say don't make mistakes, right? We never say don't make mistakes. I always say just make the right mistakes, make smart mistakes, make ones that fail are going to teach you something and propel you. Yep. Fail forward, fail fast and fail forward. Failure is not a bad thing. I love failure. Success scares me more than failure does, quite honestly. Failure gives me something to work with. Success is always a little bit scary to me, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. So that's where I would, you know, I would stick. Um, it's not be perfect. That leads into do not spend money on unnecessary things. I spent $12,000 back in 2007 to launch my first website, my first brand, Get oh the my gosh. get the logo, get everything. And that's what everybody was quoting me. It wasn't like I went to one person and that was it. And I went, well, all right, $12,000. But they were all somewhere between ten dollars and $12,000. And I thought, okay, well, if I'm going to do it right, I'm going to do it. This is an investment. I'm going to make it work. It's going to go back into my business. I don't know that I ever made that money back 100%, to be quite honest mm -hmm. with what I did. But it goes again. Do you need a website? Probably not as a coach right now, really work your LinkedIn profile, really work your store profile, make sure that you have an appropriate presence out there, but don't worry about a website just yet. It will right. come, but until your message isn't clear, until you, your programming is clear, who you're going to serve is more clear. A website doesn't really help you because it just throws generic information out there that doesn't really help you connect with others. So <laughs> A lot of us think that we need that to be credible. Right. When, if I can right. just add that 
those of you who are already on the SOAR platform, and if you're not, I'm going to put a link in the chat box where you can go learn more information about that. But you, that's actually very beneficial to ride. Uh, it's very beneficial for you to be seen on a third-party website. So that landing page can be sufficient in many cases. So you can yeah. use it for free. So don't spit. That would be an unnecessary thing is starting a website. Man. Right. And Right. That's something, you know, we don't necessarily need. You don't necessarily, you, you want to take courses. People spend a lot of money on courses to make sure they know all the stuff. They have the right certifications. They have all the knowledge they need. And that's also not necessary. Maybe some of it is, but really prioritize what is going to propel you forward. How is it going to bring value back? How are you going to recuperate that money? Don't invest if you can't figure that out clearly from right. the get go. And I, you know, and I talk about this because even when I became a coach, I had been in business for a while. I knew this, but as a coach, I still hadn't figured out really who I wanted to talk to. I had a good idea. I had a bit of a message and I took a really great marketing course um, from another coach who does business coaching. And I spent $1,500 on a 12 week program, which really was a very fair investment. Nothing, very fair. You, know, you know, nothing remarkable on that level, but I couldn't actually get anything out of it because I still didn't know what to say. So even though he was teaching me the how to do everything, I didn't have content to put to that how. Mm -hmm. And so you really want to make sure that you're working with someone who can help you craft the basic fundamental information before you start figuring out how to build your following, how to get people to you. Your message needs to be clear. So focus there first. Okay. Focus on the message. Got it. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. Next because even if you do go and build a website, you have to have a message on it. Hello. So it is a first right. step. Yeah. It's a first step. You've got to have your message because you don't want to go out there generically as a coach. I want to help people. I give people better lives. I help organizations, you know, build better teams. That doesn't say anything. Yeah. So but what you, is what I'm thinking. You know, exactly. So you need to really hone that message so that you can stand out. And people will go, oh, this person really gets me. So your story, your message is super important. The next area, and this comes again from my very first business that I started with events, don't focus on the naysayers. I had basically a small dining events company that showcased small business, showcased local products, showcased local chefs, that everything was local, 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 local. And there was this foodie forum where everybody promoted local and everybody hated chain restaurants and everything I would do. And I would put an event in there and they were like, well, who makes you think that, you know, this is a good thing for you. And, 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 and I mean, and just constantly attacking me. And I kept trying to convince them that what I was doing completely supported their principles. And it was frustrating and it was bringing me down when at the end of the day, I had five or six people who loved what I was doing. And instead of, right, this is a strengths-based approach. Put good energy after good energy. Don't focus on the naysayers. The naysayers are not your people. They are right? not your people. Everybody, the, did you hear that? Say yes in the chat box if you <laughs> heard what she just said. The naysayers are not your people anyway. So don't give them the energy of trying to convince them when you've got other people out there who want what you have. Focus on the yay sayers, not the naysayers. That's okay. It. And it will build right there. That is a strengths based approach to your business. Focus on fertile soil, focus where the people already want you. And you're going to grow so much faster and so much more easily than if you try to convince other people of what's awesome about you. Just doesn't work that way. Mm -mm. So don't get caught up in overwhelm. And I will tell you, this is probably my biggest devil. My I'm ideation, thinking like, really? <laughs> tell us how to do that. <laughs> my ideation, my futuristic, my strategic, my maximizer. Man, I can think so big that I can't even imagine necessarily how it's ever going to happen. And then I just get stuck, right? If I can't take a first step, I just get stuck. And so when we dreaming big. So this is really, this is for ideation people, for futuristic people, for people that have those visions, connectedness people on some level as well, that just want everything to be good for everyone, right? 
we can get stuck in some overwhelm and overwhelm can cause a little bit of paralysis. Cause if you're like, Oh my God, I'm just one person. How I'm going to do this. What can I do? And then I still subscribe, although I don't read it as frequently. I used to subscribe to tut.com, which is the universe. And some of you out there might know of notes from the universe with Mike yes. Julie from tut.com. And so this is back in 2007, getting into 2008. I'm, you know, I've got big plans. Like I see major change for the city. I see changes for people's social circles. Like I imagine something huge. And then I'm thinking, maybe I've got it all wrong. Maybe, maybe I should just quit. Maybe I should figure something else out. Like obviously something's wrong. And then this little note pops up into my email one day from tut.com. Mm. Tiny little dreams require tiny little thoughts and tiny little steps. Great big dreams require tiny little thoughts and tiny little steps. Get the picture? Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, this motto has stayed with me for 11 years. And this is what keeps me going. When you are building a business, it feels overwhelming. It feels like you'll never get enough hours in the day. You won't have enough time to do what you need to do. You're just one person. And I promise you, there is a way. There is delegation. Even when you're on a limited budget, there are still ways to delegate. There are ways to get where you want to go. You just figure out where is the first place you need to get there. Mm -hmm. Or right? where is Where's, the next step? What is right? The what's step? the next step? Mm -hmm. What's the next thing that has to happen so that the following step can start? Right. So you yeah. really do think about, you know, you don't eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? It's, it's, it's one bite at a time. And that's how you have to approach your business and anything that you're seeing. And for me with my communication, verbal processing really helps me with this now. And I had a boss, um, that really helped because we used to have a lot of contention early, early, early on in our uh, working relationship. And it was because I would think really big and he would like, so he would go, okay, so that's all right, but not really what I wanted. And he just put a big X on my idea and all the work I'd done, flipped the page over and then start again. And after How six sad. months of doing this, yeah. And then after six months of this, I mean, imagine this, he was crushing my ideation. He was crushing my maximum. Like I put a lot of thought into what I was presenting and he was just crushing me. And what happened was he wasn't actually kiboshing my ideas. He was just taking me back to the first step so that we could get to where I had visioned, but he wasn't communicating that with me. And it was through strengths and a little bit of disc that we finally understood that I could give the big picture and then he would take me to the middle of the circle and show me what had to happen to make the big vision happen. And that it may not all happen the first time we do it, but it gave us places to evolve. And so now understanding that even though I have a big goal, it's an evolution and it doesn't mean the only success is the big success. There are successes along the way that get me there. And so he really helped me learn that as well. And then this, of course, was a fabulous reminder when I became my own entrepreneur and no longer had a boss who did that for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Would show me that. It's he, very talk about someone who honed my ourselves. strategic. Yeah, talk about someone who honed my strategic. That man taught me a lot of my, my ability to be able to do that for myself when I didn't know I could. Sure. Um, don't be afraid to experiment. Now, this is not about grasping at straws and taking any business you can find and trying things out, but it's about saying, I don't know, I really love working with parents, but I kind of love this idea of entrepreneurs too. Maybe there's a way they come together. Maybe there's not. So work with each of those. Do you like working one-on-one? -on -one? Do you like working in big groups? Try it out a couple of times and see what starts to feel right. And then let that piece sort of organically flow for you and help guide you where you need to keep putting your focus. Because sometimes, you know, I say get your message clear, right? But part of getting that message clear is to try on a couple of hats, try on a couple of methods, see what feels good for you. I learned very early on that just one-on-one -on -one coaching does not work for me. The whole process of going through just one-on-one -on -one coaching doesn't work, but working with small groups and then giving them individual attention within that group that is about creating a plan for action, that I can do. 
Mm -hmm. right? And other people don't really like the groups. They prefer the long journey one-on-one. You know, I love our building relationship people. That's just not who I am. But it's finding, it's finding where you will connect and how you will connect with others. So don't be afraid to experiment a little bit, but don't grasp at straws either, right? Try to stay fairly focused. Yeah. Another thing you can do too with your courses, I think is diversify them. If you like working with a certain industry, try working with a, a similar industry and just change your presentation around so that that can open up another, possibly another avenue. Or you may figure out you don't want to work with those people at all. I know someone who refuses to work with uh, financial people. She just doesn't <laughs> feel confident you know, right. and that would probably include, that might include me <laughs> with analytical <laughs> 32. It's like, uh, you know, uh, but she doesn't feel comfortable working in that environment. And I think that it's only through that experimentation that you go, Ooh, not so much. And right. that guides you, you know, towards the thing that you really do find joyful and energetic. Right. And the way that you coach, when we look at it from a strengths perspective, right, the way that you coach will attract people with certain profiles as well. Because the longer you coach, you start to realize that there are certain talents that just seem to be attracted to you for, like, I just had to do an interview for someone with a ranger. I've been doing this for almost, for three and a half years now, the way I do my process with the strengths branding, strengths unleashed. And do you know, I had a dickens of a time trying to find someone I knew with a ranger, in their top five or number one. And like of the hundreds of people I worked with, I had three, right? And I thought, that's so strange. And a ranger is really high for me. And I'd had a conversation with someone recently saying, well, you know, I think when there's one arranger in a group, you don't need anybody else because that one person takes care of all the arranging. And so it's like one of those that like, once you got it filled, you don't really need that many others around you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It's kind of like like sides of a magnet, right? They just kind of go, no, not so much. Anyway. I, I wanted to add here, Joe, that not only uh, is an experimentation necessary in this, but so is tracking the, not only how you feel, but how, but what kind of people you are attracting. So for example, you don't attract a lot that Randy King is saying, Hey, I'm a ranger number one. If you need me. <laughs> but uh, if you, what I have found for me is my clients always, always a hundred percent of the time have empathy and or connectedness and often both in their top 10 or in their dominant, like it may be 12. This is one of the things I've started using Cascade for. This is one of the things I've started using Cascade for is to track who is attracted to me with the messages I'm currently using and help using that to help me create better marketing and to understand my clients better. So it's become a market research tool for me as much as it's become a useful tool for doing workshops, right? Sure. It has a secondary benefit. Yeah. Well, so. Cascade offers a great uh, stuff. And don't forget that you have access to the, uh, if you're pro and above on SOAR, you have access to creating, I think you can create a cream team grid, even if you're not. Forgive me if you need that. I'll have yep. to check it out. But you can actually find out and upload those talent, uh, your, you know, your clients and their talents in, and you can determine what yeah. the highest is. And that is, that team grid is what's really awesome is to be able to put all that in there. So even if you don't have a cascade, but I, sure. I like seeing the graphs, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Too. Sure, of course. And the last one is, do you need a niche? So everyone in marketing says, who is your niche? Who are you focusing on? Who is your ideal client? Who do you want to work with? And I kind of have a different, yes, you need a niche. Yes, you need some, you need a specialization. You need to be known for one thing. But this is again, where I think sometimes our message will reach the people who need to hear it. And you will naturally find out who your niche is, who your ideal client is. I didn't set out to work with coaches. In fact, when I first started the idea was to work with entrepreneurs, was to work with independent business owners, was to do some workshops at universities and help people figure these little things out to get started. And what happened was I worked with a few coaches and then they referred more coaches and then they referred more coaches, right? And that became my niche organically just because that's who needed the help that I had. Mm -hmm. 
right? So it's, um, so I think sometimes our message. And so I often think about when you're trying to think about who you want to talk to or who you want to work with, like I loved parents. I really thought parents was going to be my niche, but as hard as I tried to make that connection work, there was always something that just kind of blocked it. It didn't quite get off the ground. I've got programs developed around it. I've got materials developed, around it, but I just, I couldn't get to the clients. And I kept saying, well, you know, the coaching thing is my side gig. You know, all the branding I do, that's, that's my side gig. And once I finally said, this is not my side gig. This is what I do. <laughs> like it took off. Yes. So sometimes your niche is already there and you're just for whatever reason, resisting it. You don't think you're good enough. It wasn't what you had your heart set on. It wasn't where you thought you were going to be. I, I would really ask you, if you find that you're already automatically attracting certain people to you, look at what is in common with that. What is it that they've needed from you? And that will help you craft that message. And as much as we think about who we want to inspire, it's also about who inspires you. Who do you work with that gets you excited, that gets you out of bed in the morning that gets you to go, oh my God, I love working with these people. They're doing such amazing things. Like I am inspired by them. So when you can figure out who inspires you, that's a really good indication of where you're probably going to do a lot of your focus. Yeah. So here's one thing I want to make sure, and I'll, I'll say, here's one of the issues that a lot of coaches have in choosing a niche is they are afraid it's going to cut them out of business. When the reality is that by choosing your niche of working with coaches, and I, by the way, work pretty much exclusively with coaches too, at least that's how I market myself. It doesn't exclude me from picking up business here, there, and yonder, as my mama would have said. You know, you can go in and you can still be out there and working with teams or working with other clients. And that resistance that you talked about, Joe. I think it's important to understand that people, when they feel that resistance, let's talk about why that they, you're having that resistance. So here's how it sounds that I hear from coaches is, well, I love working with non nonprofits, but they don't have any money. Or I love working in the church field and with the faith-based communities, but they don't have any money. That is absolutely untrue. That's, first of all, right. a mindset issue. And secondly, it's untrue. So the resistance that you feel is a clue that you just need to work through something in order to work with that group of people who you clearly love. You just have to figure out the way around it because nonprofits have money. Churches are extremely generous, so you just have to keep believing that they are and be delightfully surprised, you know? Uh, so there's just a lot of different ways. Uh, yes, you, I see that, uh, Carrie Ann, you've got three groups that you work with, uh, faith-based organizations, young adults, teams, mm -hmm. and what is the thing that brings them together? That's what, uh, here's what Joe's trying to, Joe, help her see what you're trying to have her see so, because everybody else can benefit from that. Right. So what I'm asking Carrie Ann right now is that she's inspired by three different groups, which is great. Be inspired because I was inspired by different ones. But when somebody wants to recommend you, they need to know what it is you do and who it is you do it for. They need to have a clear idea. And so if you are truly working with faith-based organizations, young adults, and teams at small businesses, what is the glue that holds all of those together that they all benefit? Or how do you pick one that will allow you to open up the doors to work with those other people, right? So where do you put your core piece in there? Like right now, I would say I am known as the bilingual coach. So if you need a coach who speaks English and Spanish, you have clients that have Spanish and play. I'm pretty much the go-to bilingual coach right now. And I can get you to other Spanish speaking coaches if need be. And then I'm known for branding and helping people create their message and their voice. And so now people know that before I would say even a year ago, people didn't know that about me because I wasn't communicating it because I was putting too many things out there about what I loved instead of focusing my message. So you want people to know you for sort of one thing, which is fine, 
that you expand. I mean, there are people that what were faith-based and chiropractors, right? It's okay, but you want the message to be one that will concisely attract those people mm-hmm. um, is what I'm trying to get at. And so just my own personal story with this resistance and, and what was happening is I was actually having a coaching call uh, with Kevin Thiel in, in the UK and we were chit chatting and he was talking about, you know, he really wants to work through sales and sales and strengths and these kinds of things. But he was feeling a little resistant for some reason. And I said, you know, I feel the same way about my parenting. Like I have a lot of passion for parenting, but I'm worried because I'm not an educator. I'm still a new mom. I don't have a lot of experience. I'm not a psychologist. Like where's my credibility coming from? right? Like no one's going to think I'm credible. And I said, and what it really is, is I'm not trying to teach parents how to be great parents. I'm a communication expert. I'm not a parenting expert. It was like, ding, 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 ding. I'm a communications expert. Which and is that why becomes the thing that ties those two together. Exactly. And so I can still, so I still help coaches that are developing businesses around parents and families because I've got a lot of those tools, but they don't have to be my target, but I can help coaches with that target because I understand the communications piece and that's all I ever wanted to do, which is hi, why the branding was working so well, because that's where I'm strong is in communication. Right. But once I accepted that as my zone of genius, instead of going, well, you know, everybody can do that. Like I'm not that good. Who am I? No, once I accepted it, it's been fantastic. And so it's finding that space where you finally go, you know what? I am really good at this. I need to do more of it. And that's going to keep you going and your business is going to build naturally. Well, here's the other thing too, is if you choose to have a niche market, that's going to help you expand. Thanks, Katie. Good to see you. That's going to help you expand into other markets. So for example, the area that you love to be in, Carrie Ann, I'm just going to speak directly to yours about faith-based, is that as you work within the faith-based community, you make sure that they know you work outside of the faith-based community community. So you use your faith-based community to expand into the small business, the small teams, the small whatever. And the membership will want to bring it to their organizations, right? Absolutely. They already know you, like you, trust you through your faith-based community. And so therefore they're going to be far more open to bringing you into their company that's really what you're looking at as a possibility. So here's the right. thing though, you still want to keep aiming your marketing at the faith-based community because that way you have a clear, consistent message, but then you have the expansion opportunity. So you can plant seeds during every exercise. For example, you're in your faith-based community and you, as you're passing out or talking about the exercise, you then say, and just so y'all know that in a corporate setting, I would use it like this. And you let them know. And they're like, oh, oh, wow. And the next thing you know, you get the phone call and they want you to come in. So this is how you can niche and still stay open and avoid that fear of, oh, if I niche, I'm going to lose business because you're not, you're going to actually gain more business. Mm-hmm. going to go, it's going to grow and That grow. makes sense for everybody and hopefully helpful. Yeah. So yeah, Joe, and what kind of questions do you guys have? Cause we just wanted to be, a, give this a short video on things you can avoid and save you money. So Martin, I'm going to go ahead and Martin has, uh, I think he, he has his, I'm going to post his, he's posted here. I'm going to go ahead and post it for you, Martin. Here's Martin. Yeah. I'm just saying, here's your, (laughs) here's how Martin has niched. His niche is stress in the workplace. And when he, go ahead, Martin. Well, I've got to tell you, um, I suffered the same fear that I know a lot of people are suffering in that if you niche or niche, as we say over here. um, (laughs) Sorry, we're saying it wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's a shame the French don't have a word for niche. But anyway, um, (laughs) if my fear was if I close my market down, I would just be turning away customers. And that felt wrong. Um, right. But what happens is you get known as being the expert in the area. 
And once you Absolutely. get known to be that expert, then people come to you rather than you having to go to them. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Mm-hmm. It increases your referrals, your referral-based yeah. business. I get business from all different places and it looks different. But when you see my marketing, it's all aimed at one group because that's where I want to grow. And that's where I love working. And that's where I find myself working all the time. So it makes sense to stay there. Yeah, but that's a great example, uh, Martin, of how you've crossed over and you're able to work in corporate, you're able to work with teams, you're able to work with one-on-one individuals because you are the stress expert yeah, on it's, helping it's, people. Mm-hmm. It, it's, you can, well, I've got learner in my top five, so I keep learning. And I was at a weekend seminar on speaking from the stage. And I went in there thinking, I probably know all I need to know about this, but just to check. But, and of course, there's always something new to learn. And my opening gambit has now changed. And when I tried it out on someone, the idea is to get an emotional response when you do your pitch. And Absolutely. The, the original was okay, but I tried this new out, one out on, on a few people and their heads went in their hands. They were like horrified of what I was saying. And that's the emotional response I wanted. It, well, it was, you're not going to leave you know. us hanging. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I what did you, you know, say? I don't have it written down in front of me, but it's something like, I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a drug epidemic going on right now in the workplace. And it's worse than that, it's open. There are employees that will, one of them said to me, in order to get through this stressful moment, I'm just going to pop a benzo. I had no idea what she meant. She meant benzodiazepine. And if you don't want to know what that is, that's Valium. So they're taking Valium to get through this, but it's worse than that, it's open. They're going up to each other and saying, which one are you taking? I'm taking this. Oh, I tried that before, it doesn't work very well. It's an open drug culture to get through stress in the workplace. My name's Martin Daubney and I'm here to tell you. (laughs) See, you're reeling in shock. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Oh, that's perfect. And then you bung your name in when when you've got them all emotional, because they remember. Mm-hmm. Yep. Very, very Excellent. powerful. Fantastic. The good thing I, I want to just say to Carrie Ann for a second, the good thing about her being in the faith-based community as her gateway to teams, entrepreneurs, and the greater marketplace is that all of the people you're working with want to bring their faith and their talent and their gifts into the world at large. And so you're dealing with people who have purpose and those kinds of things. And they definitely want those to spread in through the culture of their communities, uh, of their workplace, their work. So yeah, great conversation. Any other questions that we have? We're going to, if you'll pop them in the chat chat box quickly, uh, we're not going to hang out too long. We just want to Uh, give you some tips and tricks to help you grow your business and to understand a little bit more about how you can position yourself in the market. Joe Self, I'll give you the last word. Well, maybe not, but let me hear from you. (laughs) (laughs) I can't imagine I'll have the last word. No, Um, I'm just going to put my link in here with my uh, email address as well. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have any questions or just want to follow up, I am always open to having a chat with you to walk through some of these ideas if you're feeling stuck with any one of those and, and just want to talk it through. Verbal processor here, great sounding board, happy to do it. And I hope that you found this uh, helpful today and that if you recognize one of these that might be tripping you up, that you can work through how to get through it this time. So exactly. thank you very much for the time, Rhonda. I really appreciate it. Always love being here and uh, hosting these fabulous little trainings with you. You bet. And if anyone wants to reach out to me, you can find me uh, through mysore.com, linksore.com forward slash Rhonda Boyle. Just reach out to me there with anything that you have, and I'm happy to serve you. And if you want to know more about Soar, I listed that link a little bit earlier. Let's see. 
right here. Let me go grab that and pop it in. And thanks for joining us. By the way, Joe and I will be together again on Saturday. Joe, it is this Saturday, yeah? It is this Saturday. We run, yeah, we only have uh, room for 12 of you, but we run a fun pajama party strategy session on Saturday coming up. We do it once a month. And we will definitely kick you uh, in the activator and into gear. So if you want to go to events.soar.com, you're going to find that in the SOAR online community, which is what I kind of work through. And I'm happy to, we will be happy to serve you. We only have room, as I said, for 12. And we really get into uh, some, some challenges, Joe. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Lots of great coaching that happens. Lots of good peer to peer coaching that happens. You find other people are dealing with similar things. And so it's an open forum for great coaching to get you past the stuck, right? Absolutely. So hope to see you there and we will see y'all the next time. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye.